Ladies and gentlemen, we have here today and a little impressions video for you. Of course, since I'm always on the ball, this review copy that Sega gave me like a week ago, thank you Sega, had to wait until literally the day that the game came out for me to upload a video on because I happened to get a new job at the same time I got these, these review codes because life is like that. But, you know what? That's an excellent segue, because that seems to be the theme of this game. Life is a grind. Ladies and gentlemen, do you see the metaphor that they oh, wait for this game? Like grinding to increase your level in, in an RPG? Uh -huh. huh? Yes! Oh, exactly. man, I'm so smart! Yeah! Oh my god! <laughs> Joining us today for this impressions video, we have Clement, who happens to have uh, been with us to record a commentary on the same day that I got this finished. So I was like, what the hell? I've been seeing you tweeting about Yakuza, like, a whole bunch over the last month or so. So, yeah. like, why not? Let's do it! <laughs> It's Yakuza. I'm going to say up front, though, I've only played Yakuza Like a Dragon for, like, an hour, and I am nowhere near where he is at the at this point in the game, so... Oh, yeah, this was, like, six, seven <laughs> hours into the game. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, man, I was not... Okay, so I was about to, to mention that, wow, you know... This is a much more serious tone than I was expecting for this in the no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, this this game, um, much like Yakuza 0, I would say, leans a little bit more heavily into the wacky elements than some of the other Yakuza games would much earlier on. Um, and, you know, in some ways it's comparable to Yakuza 0. It kind of uses the Dragon Quest motif in the same way that Yakuza 0 used money. Because Yakuza 0 had this whole theme going with money in excess. Because it takes place in the 80s during the bubble economy. Which is something you probably won't know about if, if you're not familiar with Japanese history. But basically, the 80s were an age of excess right before the economic bubble burst and stuff got bad for everyone. And um, the Yakuza Zero was basically one big, uh, one big story about that. And uh, set in modern times, Yakuza Seven. It's not technically Yakuza Seven. It's Yakuza Like a Dragon in the West, but same difference. It's the seventh main entry. Yakuza Seven uses RPG mechanics and RPG themes as a means of underlining its main theme, which is, as you can probably guess by the fact that this first scene here is taking place in a, in a little homeless camp, grinding your way up from rock bottom. That is the name of this chapter, by the way, the town at rock bottom. Now, I've actually skipped over a lot of the setup for this video because it's, it's genuinely really effective establishment for the new cast, but I didn't want to spoil it, so I decided to skip on ahead to um, about six or seven hours into the game where the party members start to become more frequent, and um, there are also more stories that aren't super Wait, plot important. you can important. throw pigeons at people? That's great. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, okay, Nanba's job, his default job anyway, there is a job system in this game. Oh, uh, awesome. <laughs> um, his default job is homeless guy, and his first attack skill is he throws seeds on an enemy to summon a flock of pigeons to attack them. <laughs> so is the combat in this all turn-based? Um, or is yes. there... Yes, okay, because yes, it actually it is. looks really smooth for the, it, like, I thought it was part live action for for a while, just due to how everything moved. Um, it's, it's using a lot of the same technical stuff that went into Yakuza 6 and Judgment and Kiwami 2 where uh, there's mostly seamless transitions into battles when you when, when you encounter random enemies around town and a lot of the same physics and objects and stuff still factor in but the characters position themselves automatically and your input is purely menu based it's a smoother transition than you would expect because yakuza was yeah yeah yakuza was 
action action combat notwithstanding, primarily an RPG all along. So it had a lot of the building blocks for a good turn-based RPG adventure to begin with. For example, I mean, uh, go ahead. I mean, like, I've done, like, a lot of the sub-stories, and I've actually gone after, like, the super boss Amon as often as I could with these Yakuza games uh, this past year. And there are certainly a lot of things regarding, like, equipment that Kiryu can equip, and, like, certain potion drinks that you want to have to, to boost your heat meter and stuff. There has always been an RPG element-ish to the Yakuza games. Like, it is mostly just a beat-em-up. But uh, this feels like the most natural thing they've done with those mechanics to be like, you know, let's just transition to straight up turn-based RPG, you know. That's actually what I was about to bring up. Uh, one of the things that this shift to turn-based combat does is suddenly a lot of mechanics that were already part of the Yakuza series feel more important to the overall experience. Like, um, when I play other Yakuza games, like, <laughs> when I play other Yakuza games, a lot of the time when I'm going to the restaurant to eat, for example, the main reason I'm going there is to check each menu item off of a completion list. In this game, you're going to be going to the, the restaurant a lot more often just to heal up and refill your MP bar. So it feels more important to the gameplay loop rather than something that you're doing to, um, well, just to, to do it. So, in and that extends to stuff like equipment and stuff as well. The weapons in Yakuza previously, unless you were playing as that one guy from Yakuza 5 who has a lot of unique weapon combos, the weapons in Yakuza tended to, be, to, tended to feel more like a power-up, and the bulk of your moveset was still with your bare hands, you know? Um, whereas in this game, you're going to be paying a lot more attention to the weapons you equip your characters with because it's just like Dragon Quest. You want to have the best weapon that you can get at a given point in the game. Um, yeah, so this game is, yeah, that's one of the big things. Like, it's called Like a Dragon because the, the Japanese uh, title for Yakuza is Like a Dragon, but... It's also, the pun is, like, Dragon Quest, so, haha, yes. get it? So, <laughs> um, yeah, I, so that was always really, I guess, like, funny and interesting to me, is, is that, oh, they are going to, like, make all these Dragon Quest references, which I'm surprised they were even able to do, because um, Sega does not own Dragon Quest, that's a Square Enix property. So, they even, they got the, um, the, vo the main person behind Dragon Quest, Yuji Hori, to consult on the game, which I also find funny in in a lot of ways. But I guess just in, um, wondering about it, it's like, how, like, RPG is the gameplay outside of the battles, would you say? Like, Well, outside of the battles, it's, it's the same as it's always been, really, which is to say, very RPG. Okay. All of the stuff, all of the stuff outside of combat in the Yakuza series is textbook RPG stuff. In fact, the original Yakuza game didn't even have the, the free controllable camera that you would associate with like a GTA type game. It had fixed camera angles and loading transitions between screens and all of that stuff that you would associate with a Final Fantasy game. So it was very RPG from the beginning, and um, it has remained as such for the entirety of its run, which is why I say transitioning to turn-based is kind of natural for it. It's, um, it doesn't change the game up as much as you would think it would. It maybe does change the core appeal quite a lot, but the gameplay loop is more or less the same. Interesting, okay. <laughs> um, in fact, uh, if, if anything, the only real difference that I can draw between this and previous Yakuza games is that there's a, a slower burn than the usual slow burn to set up the story because Kiryu's storyline ended in 6. It brought his story and the stories of many of the connected characters to a satisfying and very definitive conclusion. So, with Yakuza 7, they had to bring in a completely new protagonist with a completely new supporting cast to go with him, and uh, the game spends a good number of hours 
um, up until this point, establishing those characters, what their motives are for being with you, and just generally getting you invested in their stories. And it does a very, very good job at that. I was very skeptical of Ichiban over here. You know, crazy hair over there. I was really skeptical about this guy just from looking at him, he looked a bit too wacky for this series, but I was surprised getting into it how well he worked, both thematically and as a protagonist for this type of game. Well, he does have a very charming and recognizable look to him. Like, I think one of the things that you maybe risk when you make a game like this is that a lot of the characters just kind of look like, you know, Japanese dudes and don't look super distinct. It's a complaint that people have about Western shooters where it's like, oh, they're all bald white guys. So, you know, there's, uh, so who cares, right? Um, and I think that his outfit and his hair and the, the beard and the way he is, he looks very distinct. Which I think is a very good thing for uh, for the game in general, because it just lets you it let it makes him it makes him look distinct. But I think it also fits with the vibe that at least Yakuza kind of appears to have. Speaking as an outsider, I have not played any of the Yakuza games. I I will eventually, but kind of at the moment i'm just not in the mood for a game this big so it's not probably not happening anytime soon <laughs> that's but, fair um i always got the idea that yakuza was plenty silly and i mean i know that the games do have their more uh, serious moments but the stuff that you at least hear about on the internet is all like oh uh hostess clubs and bowling alleys where you win a chicken and being able to go do a taxi mini game where you have to abide by uh actual driving laws you know um that was the kind of stuff that i always got the the view of yakuza just speaking purely as an outsider so i think that his appearance generally works like i would I think this guy, at least visually, looks as distinct as Kiryu does. He's the other... That's the name of the other guy, right? Um, yeah. So, yeah. So, you said you're, like, an hour or so into the game, Clement. Would you say you... And you've been playing other games in the series recently, right? Yeah. I, I started with Kiwami 1. I went through... Pretty much release order. So I went Kiwami 1, Kiwami 2, 3, 4, 5, and then I did 0. A lot of people told me to do 0 first, but I actually wanted to do it in the way that they were released, kind of. And Kiwami was kind of the bad choice just because it has so many 0 elements in it. Yeah. That uh, there's a lot of payoff to things like the Pocket Circuit Fighter quest that maybe I would have appreciated more had I played 0 first. But um, I, I wanted to get the general direction of the series as it was you know I, I i enjoyed playing yakuza 0 with the knowledge of everything that happened from one through five before i got to it because then i could go oh that's that guy oh that's ryuji uh like i would never have made those connections if i played zero first but um ryuji is the eye patch guy right no, that's that's majima ryuji is the antagonist of uh, yakuza 2 uh, the Dragon of Kansai, as he's called. Okay. Um, yeah. yeah, he does make a cameo appearance as a kid in Zero. I forgot about that. <laughs> but, um... And it's been a fun time. Like, I, I, if I didn't like the series, I probably would have quit at Yakuza 2. But uh, I genuinely enjoyed the first one. And then the games got better and better. And then they got worse and worse. But still, like, good. You know, I still enjoyed my time with 3 and 4. And, uh... Yeah, it's a great series. I had a lot of fun with it. So, and and I'm I'm a big turn-based RPG fan. So when I heard that like Yakuza Seven, like a dragon, was gonna be just straight up an RPG, I got really excited because I was like, oh, what? Because I've I've never played an RPG that's like this wacky and this modern. Because usually RPGs are are set in these fantastical locations. You know, <laughs> you're you're in a medieval kingdom. You're a knight. You're at the apocalypse, like it's Nocturne or something. You know. It's never like, 
<laughs> you're walking through the streets of Japan and you're and you're teaming up with hobos to fight organized mobsters. <laughs> <laughs> it kind of feels a little bit like a mother game if it were photorealistic <laughs> almost. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking that too like oh it's it's earthbound. Uh, kind of. It's like mother if it grew up. <laughs> <laughs> uh which is funny because Mother was kind of aping Dragon Quest at the time. Hey, no, not it? not just kind of. It it is <laughs> like the even down to the menus, which are identical to the Dragon Quest menus. Um, it is they it, they are the same game. Um, I would just I just don't think that it's as well made as many DQ games. Yeah. But that's a different discussion for another time. I think. Um, mm. So who is this lady? Here. Okay, this lady is um, a person who becomes semi-important in one of the early story quests that helps Ichiban establish himself and rise up one rung of the ladder above a totally homeless deadbeat. The setup for this entire sequence is that um, Ichiban convinces Nanba to come with him to Hello Work, which is a job center where people who are unemployed like them can theoretically uh queue up to try and get assigned work uh, the catch is uh, when they get there they realize uh, that hello work cannot help them because they do not have a home address wait bit of, oh. <laughs> bit of a flaw in the system there isn't it so uh but the director of the place who's a bit non-conventional uh gives them a hot tip on a job that they might be able to that they might be able to take up to get a bit of pocket money and this job leads them to this woman um that job is actually well behind us now but she recruits us for another job afterward and it turns out to be and she asks us to clean up her restaurant which um isn't really a restaurant it's actually a whorehouse um so yeah um that's the kind of serious subject matter that you can that you can expect to come up in the Yakuza series a fair lot of the time. So this whole situation has to do with Bleach Japan, this group of um, this organized group of protesters who are trying to drive out the gray areas of Japanese society. You know, the um, the places where the police generally turn a blind eye because they consider it not worth. Uh, diving into um in and ichiban himself was raised in what's called a soapland so he has a certain a soapland is a legal gray area within the japanese sex industry so he has a certain empathy with that with with the people who work in those what? in those in those areas so he essentially sides with the madam over here because he can tell that she's actually one of the good-willed ones who genuinely cares about the people who are working under her and whatnot. They have this conversation later about how she is working so hard to protect this business because she knows that the people who work under her are like are the children of illegal immigrants and they don't have actual japanese citizen citizenship Ooh. yet and if she let the the business fold which it almost inevitably Whoa. will within the next few years they would wind up drifting off to another similar business under under the care of someone who would take advantage of them and it's just a generally terrible situation and in the middle of this terrible situation is this goofball. <laughs> and this fire-breathing oh monster. Oh my god! <laughs> and, uh, these I are, swear... <laughs> these are, like, almost identical to the tag team attacks from uh, Dragon Quest Eleven. I would like to point out as well. <laughs> where they combine their forces and do something, like silly together um, oh didn't did you notice that um that uh ichiban is wearing a suit in the exact same shade of purple as the dragon quest 11 hero i actually did not notice that but it's pretty great now that yeah. you do and they have little little 16-bit dragon quest sprites for all of the characters in the loading screen oh the loading screens yeah, yeah. oh man uh, i'm assuming you're cutting those out but uh, oh they, they'll they'll pop up from time to time i think Okay, but, I'll, have to, uh, I'll have to keep my eye out for this. Okay, this actually does look pretty pretty fun. Um, how connected to the o other Yakuza games would you say these um, are in general? Well, 
in the beginning, it's focused mostly on on the uh, on the, the new characters and establishing them. I do know vaguely. I haven't spoiled myself on the specifics. I do know that recurring characters from the previous games will appear later on, and will factor into the story in uh, significant ways. Uh, presumably, it would be disappointing otherwise. And you know, I've seen Matt Mercer on Twitter confirm that he is Majima. So, because uh, that, that's another thing. This game has an English dub for the first time since the like 2005 original. Well, the first game to have an English dub was actually Judgment, which is like te yeah, yeah. technically a spinoff, but also just a plain up, plain straight up Yakuza game. Um, <laughs> uh, but. That was the first time they experimented with an English dub. I'm not using the English dub, though, because I've been playing Yakuza for so long in Japanese that it would just feel weird to, to switch away from it now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um... I can understand yeah. that for sure, especially when it's a game that's set in Japan. I can understand wanting to keep it uh, Japanese. Yeah, it, it, does, it does feel more natural seeing Japanese people speaking the Japanese language, kind of the way it feels more natural for me watching Full Metal Alchemist in a clearly German-based setting, hearing some sort of Western language coming out of their mouths, you know? Um, but... Still, it's 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 something worth pointing out that, like, if you're one of those people who couldn't get into Yakuza because you're like, oh, so much reading, you know, it's a different language that you don't understand and you don't like reading mm -hmm. line upon line upon line of dialogue, uh, this game has an English dub, so now you can actually understand what the characters are saying. Well, that's also another thing that's like an RPG, though, is, is that you, there's a lot of sitting and reading. Uh, and, mm -hmm. you know, like, so I guess that's another thing that made them think, oh, this makes more sense than you might originally well, assume. Either way, there are there are scenes connected to sub-stories and less significant cutscenes that are always going to have um, less uh, voice work going on. Um, as the series go, as the as you get further into the series, they do add more voice work to such scenes gradually from game to game. But you're right, the game does have an English dub, and that is going to be worth it for a lot of people. Um, I prefer to experience these games kind of like watching a subtitled Japanese movie, but uh, if if English voice work is your jam, I hear that the dubs in Judgment and Yakuza Seven are pretty good. I've heard little clips on Twitter, and it seems pretty good. Yeah, I, I, it's like I I, ha, I just haven't listened to it personally, so I couldn't tell you firsthand. Oh, they're they're really <laughs> happy about. So wait, <laughs> so he's been homeless but wearing that suit the entire time. Oh no, um, he was he he. Okay, here's the setup. Like Kiryu before him, uh, Ichiban winds up going to prison for uh, to take the fall for someone else in his Yakuza family, you know, to protect them. But unlike Kiryu, Ichiban is a bit of a naive fuck-up, so he winds up getting an extended, an extended sentence while he's in there, rather than making parole the way Kiryu did. So he's been a, he's been on the inside for 18 years. He got he, he got his suit back when they let him go, of course, because it's what he was wearing when he went in. Um, so he has this suit, which he was wearing 18 years ago, and he only just managed to clean it up. Before this whole setup, something happened, um, I'm not gonna spoil what, because it's actually really good plot twist stuff. And Ichiban wound up being dumped without a penny to his name in Yokohama, which just so happens to be the only place that his enemies can't touch him, because it's controlled by other Yakuza and Mafia groups. So, um, yeah, I wonder why they picked here to dump him. But anyway, Nanba was the one who nursed him back to health and, and you know, helped him get back on his feet. So they're working together now. That's um, a, very, a very simplified summary of how we got where we are. But Ichiban convinced Nanba to go with him to try and, you know, improve their lot in life, get work, try and rise up from rock bottom and make something for themselves. So did they let him play Dragon Quest in jail? Oh no, he didn't play it in jail. He played it as a kid when he was being raised in that soapland that I mentioned. Oh, okay. 
he models his behavior after the heroes of Dragon <laughs> Quest, which means he is way too well-intentioned to make it as anything more than a bottom-rung Yakuza. <laughs> <laughs> he literally says that he views real life as if it was a Dragon Quest, so... If that's justification as to why this game plays like a turn-based RPG and the others don't, it's Ichiban's point of view. So if I really want to be like a NASCAR driver, that means that when I go out and drive, like Mario Kart item boxes will start appearing on the roads. Is that what, <laughs> what I'm hearing? <laughs> Hold that thought. But earlier in the game, when he's talking to his to his sworn brother in the uh, in the Tojo clan back in 2000, uh, the guy observes that Ichiban has this odd habit of letting the enemy get a few punches in before 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 striking back. <laughs> so, it's almost yeah, like how the, it's how the gentlemen do it. All right, it's your turn. <laughs> it's like he's waiting his turn, yeah. Uh, so, um, the rabbit hole goes deeper, my friends. But, yes, the justification for uh, the combat being all turn-based is because that ties in with Ichiban's own mentality. It's kind of like how in the previous Yakuza games, the whole glowy energy heat mechanic had no bearing whatsoever on the story and was just a gameplay related thing but you know when you thought about it maybe you could tie the heat mechanic into the character's general perception of masculinity which always seems to come up in the story in both serious and funny contexts so huh, just something to think about I like that the, that your buddy here, though, is like, you know what? Sure. Go for it. That's <laughs> yeah, kind of inspiring. Be the hero. Why not? Yeah, it's like, you got nothing else going on. <laughs> so, it's... I, I like these heart-to-hearts that the characters have, and one of the things that I'm noticing with this game is that be, is that because the game is turn-based and you have this party mechanic, you can have this entire cast of really well-developed characters who have quite a bit of spotlight in the, in the main story and are constantly fighting at your side. It's something that Yakuza 4 and 5 kind of somewhat struggle with, where they wanted to have multiple protagonists, but they all had to be the main focus of the spotlight for a large chunk of the game at a time. And, yeah, that's going to be interesting. Yeah, and, and they did interact with each other at points, but not quite to the extent that these guys do. These guys have these enduring friendships and companionships and partnerships, and it, it's goddamn heartwarming, man. <laughs> uh, no, I, I already like the way that these guys are interacting with each other. Um, how many party members do you generally do you get in this game? Uh, I think, including Ichiban himself, I think the total number is eight. Maybe okay, seven. that's a good that's a good amount for an RPG, yeah. I think. Uh, four party members, including Ichiban, can be active at any one time. Oh, can you tell what they're doing with this bat? Yeah, it's, no. <laughs> it's Thor's hammer. <laughs> uh, so, um, I didn't actually show any of the story relating to this other guy because he appears during. He's actually the first party member to join you, but it leaves your party temporarily while you're slumming it with Nanba. Um, I'm not going to spoil how ex police officer guy here gets involved with Ichiban because it's tied in with all the cool stuff that happens at the beginning of the game. And I want all of you to experience the setup for this story for yourselves because, goddamn. It is an emotional roller coaster ride. Ah. <laughs> uh. <laughs> ah. Uh. What did they they pave the 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 road and somebody stuck their baseball bat in and it just can't get out? <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. You two are pathetic. I'll show you how it's done. Ooh. Oh my god. I have the power. <laughs> Congratulations, Link. You have the Master Sword. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> is that a weapon you can use in the game? The baseball bat with barbed wire on it? It is actually Kasuga's second job. 
His base job is either Yakuza or Arakawa Loyalist or Deadbeat, depending on what part in the opening story you are. And that's his bare-fisted style, where he's basically just fighting like a standard Yakuza character with his fists for attacks and picking up nearby physics cool. objects to swing around his weapons if they happen to be there when he uses the attack command. His second job is the hero class. <laughs> <laughs> this is the job that represents his role as the Dragon Quest hero. And it comes with the, the best, the best special ability that you'll ever see in a Yakuza game ever. Aw, oh, jeez. So, like, do the other characters get, um... Roles like that too, like is oh, um, there's like 19 Namba's, jobs and yeah, stuff that you are can they switch. all like named 19? like homeless guy and stuff like that or different? yeah yeah they all have a default job, uh, um, at least so great. far as I've seen. That's great. I'm not actually sure how you get additional jobs for the characters, but I know you can because there are achievements for like using non-default jobs and winning battles with them. One mechanic I'm kind of interested in, uh, at the very beginning, because I've only played the first hour, but you go to the champion district and there's this drunk woman that Ichiban knows, and she stumbles out of the bar, she she falls down, and like you have this object and you have like this option to either like help her up or scold her and be like kind of stern with her. And when I chose to help her up, it I noticed that my niceness meter went up. <laughs> Did you see those guys transform? Oh my god. <laughs> so when you're in the hero class, regular enemies transform into monsters. <laughs> and it's entirely in Ichiban's head. <laughs> oh, so that guy grew like 10 feet. <laughs> oh my god. So Okay, you I, get... need to I need to play this. So I you think. get all these even wackier enemies mixed in with the usual street thugs and stuff, and it's great. Um... <laughs> <laughs> so, this only happens when you're in the hero class, I think. I don't think it happens if you switch him back to um, his 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 uh, freelancer class or to any of his other classes. But, dear god. <laughs> it's great. Um, so, the personality meter. I can't actually explain that because I've gotten far enough in to know what it is. The personality meter... Not only does it determine what sub-stories and stuff you can unlock as you explore Yokohama and the other hubs, but it also increases the likelihood of inflicting specific, of specific, of inflicting specific status ailments and increases Ichiban's resistance to specific status ailments. So it factors into combat a lot more than, say, the Persona system does. Hmm. Interesting. So what, if you're nice, you're less likely to get... It if you're if you're like if you have high kindness you've got resistance to rage for example or if oh, you got I see. Okay. if you've got <laughs> high um what is it passion maybe it's passion or maybe it's something else you'll have a resistance to I know fear. there was like confidence passion uh like style yeah and each um each personality trait corresponds to specific status ailments that you might try to inflict or might be inflicted on you and that's going to factor into combat because they really do use status ailments quite a bit um, oh, i saw that in the first fight like you were bleeding and there was i think you fell asleep at one point so that's also something oh the falling asleep was actually namba's special healing self-healing skill he just zonks out on the spot for a turn and heals up most of his hp <laughs> oh so he's snorlax yeah, yeah. <laughs> did you guys really not see them transform when we fought them <laughs> i'm sorry i was so focused on my what i was trying to talk about i was barely paying attention <laughs> this is great <laughs> So, uh, so this actually is Yakuza 7. Like, this yes. isn't just a spin-off. Okay. I, I think it's, it's a bit weird. Like, when it was first announced, it was it it didn't have a sequel number, I think. But then it did. But then they but then they took the sequel number out in the West, probably because they thought they could market it better if people thought it might be a spin-off. But no, it's the main series. It's, it's the next main entry. It continues the story of the Tojo clan and everything. The big shake-up for this one is that the Tojo clan gets driven out of Kamurocho completely. Which, you know, if you've been playing the series, is kind of a big fucking deal. Um, 
<laughs> the, dra- <laughs> the Dragon Quest jingle. I forgot. Oh my god. <laughs> Whenever someone joins your party, or you change jobs, or you get a new job, you get the, ja- you get the Dragon Quest jingle. <laughs> so, uh, they really lean into the motif here, and it's great. Gotta grab uh, some gold. There we go. Yeah. Life Although really is just RPG. He, well, he well if he was only around in like the eighties, then he probably did only play the old ones where you have to grind gold. Well, he he was playing them in the eighties. Yeah. Um. He was around in the nineties and the, and like for until the first day of two thousand one. The like New Year's two thousand one is when he th- when when he turns himself into prison, and um. I think he was in the Yakuza for a number of years before that. So, yeah, he would have been playing Dragon Quest mostly in the 80s and early 90s. Mm-hmm. So, uh, now that we're in Yoko- Yokohama and we've got the hero class, we can start collecting sub-stories. I love these jingles. I love the sub-story jingle. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> And the sub-stories range from sincere, endearing stuff like this penniless homeless guy who just wants to get a birthday present for this kid who was nice enough to talk to him by the bridge. So, there's this whole storyline where you're helping this guy figure out what he can do to, um, to, uh, uh, get this kid a a present that he by no means can afford. Um, it was this quest that, I'm not going to spoil why, taught me that sometimes you must pick the correct, you must pick pick the incorrect answer first in order to get a personality boost out of the conversation. So that's, that's something to consider. Sometimes playing the role of Ichiban's character and intentionally being a fuck up, fuck up can be a good thing. Um, <laughs> so, uh... An interesting take on the whole system. But yeah, this is also one of those su- sub-stories where you have a conversation with the NPC in one part of town, and you don't immediately have an idea of where you need to do where you need to go to continue this, the sub-story. You have to find the NPC somewhere else in town at some later point in time in order to continue the sub-story with them. So that's, that sort of thing can happen here. But... Um, Oh man, it's just so sincere. That's the that's the big like central quality of the Yakuza series that makes all of the parts just meld together and click. It's that sincerity. Yeah. That yeah, I I usually I really appreciate that in a lot of games is when, you know, they there doesn't need to be seven levels of irony wrapped up and everything you know you can just have a sincere story and sometimes Ah. that really works out well the one thing that shocked me going into the yakuza series was just how wholesome and how much of a teddy bear kiryu actually is (laughs) you know (laughs) like i i went in kind of expecting he's just gonna be like this badass like macho video game guy who is just you know he takes no shit and he does the right thing but he's still like kind of you know cold and stuff but it's like no, nah, he's a father figure. He gives people personal advice. He's he's LGBT friendly. He's just like he's like the most wholesome guy in the world. And there are just like these little sub stories in Yakuza Six where you go to a bar and you're talking to all the bar patrons and helping them with their problems and and competing in baseball games and shit. And it's like it is so not what I expected when I jumped into this series. Like I knew it was gonna be wacky. I didn't expect it to be so cozy. You know? Yeah, it's like. The sincerity is the is the underlying factor of everything. Whether it's doing something really wholesome, like helping the wholesome guy, like like wholesome, helping the homeless guy figure out a present for that kid he made friends with, or or something stupid like this, where there's a public urinator and you have to help the, the and you have to help the cops catch them. <laughs> you have to help the quest of the ages. <laughs> a golden opportunity, and every line in this goddamn quest is a piss pun. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> every single line, well, almost every single line of dialogue. <laughs> so you got a public pisser on our hands. Oh man, they're really taking the piss out of this one. 
<laughs> yes, they are. And they enjoyed every goddamn minute of it. But it's like, you know, you you wouldn't expect these two quests to be in the same game, let alone on the same street, two minutes apart from each other in the same game. But Yakuza not only does that, but pulls it off on a regular basis. And part of the reason it can do that is that it's, it's very sincere about everything it does. There isn't really... Um, there isn't really quite so much of a try-hard element. There might have been in earlier games. I couldn't say for sure because I got into this series with four. Oh, trickling it. I I've seen the PS2 dub, and the PS2 dub is absolutely an early 2000s localized video game. Like, they got all these celebrities. They're constantly swearing almost every single sentence. Yeah. It's oh, amazing. yeah, because they were speaking the rude dialect in Japan, which means that you have to swear every five seconds, don't you know? <laughs> Yo, fuckhead, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> uh, but, like, speaking for the developers and the original writers and not so much the localizers, this team knows what they do well, and they just, they're confident in what they do, so they focus on just writing good stories, and it all it's all tied together with that sincere love of both what they do and of their country that's something that's going to come up a lot is okay this is not an apolitical game um i'm just going to put that out there expecting the yakuza series to not be political is like going into persona 5 expecting it not to be political and then and then being surprised when the main bad guy winds up being a politician like a literal politician but <laughs> it comes up a lot in humorous ways, in serious ways, in heart-wrenching ways, sometimes in really goddamn mundane ways. It's all over the place. They have they 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 they, they make no bones about about constant varied forms of social commentary about the stuff that's going on in Japan. And maybe for us western uh, audiences that isn't quite such a a big thing because we're distant enough from it that we often won't recognize it when it happens but oh come okay. on nanba catch up so one thing that i really did like was that they put in the little swoosh kind of rpg effect in there yeah and that <laughs> yeah. only happens when you're in hero class it's the effect that masks the enemies transforming <laughs> <laughs> oh man i didn't wait is, what is that a, wait is that like one of those like pool floaties that he's holding on to? Yeah, the city slicker. <laughs> he's a guy in a speedo. Oh, <laughs> the city slicker monster is like inexplicably all wet all over the place no matter <laughs> wait, what. Wait, wait, wait. This is something the hero class sees only? Yes. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's great. Ichiban, why do you see people going to the beach? Ichiban is yeah. just the most naive, well-meaning fuck-up you'll ever meet, and he's it makes him a good change-up, I feel, from, um, from Kiryu, who, you know, despite being, as you said, a teddy bear, is, at least on the exterior, that really cool, really top-class, honor-is-everything kind of Yakuza that you would associate with, um with pop culture with pop culture representations of what a of what a yakuza should be yeah and it's like ichiban so far of all the protagonists you know whether it's uh whether it's majima whether it's uh, akiyama whoever he seems to be like the most nerdy the most just hard on his sleeve kind of character he's just so passionate about everything yeah he falls into that he falls into that general category and it's not like um those kind of characters are foreign to the series. Like, I think one of the Yakuza 5 protagonists has a somewhat similar thing going on. Maybe not... Shinada? <laughs> yeah, yeah, him. Uh, I, I can yeah. never... I haven't played Yakuza 5 yet, so I don't remember his name quite as well as I do the other characters. But he's the one who's, you know, down on his luck, heavily in debt, and his combat style is focused on weapon combos rather than fisticuffs. Ooh. Um, I like that twirl he did before he bashed his brains in. <laughs> Although, ironically, <laughs> the the one character previous to the series who who 
is most like Ichiban is the one who would never use a baseball bat in combat because he has too much respect for the sport of baseball. <laughs> Interesting. I, I like how quick the transitions are, though. I also appreciate a lot of things like um, uh, it's very clear whose uh, turn is next if you look on the right, so you don't have to just look at the... Um, you don't have to just look at like the the map because like the map, like the what's on the 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 screen might not necessarily be what's coming up next. But you can look on the right and see. Okay, it's very clear that that guy is um, is going to be the next one to hit. So maybe you go for him next, for example. Um, the UI looks very clean, and I appreciate that. One of the things you'll want to watch out for are opportunities to get enemies while they're down. Because if, if you knock an enemy down without killing them, and if another character on your team gets an attack in right away, if you mash that attack command quickly enough and target that same target, you'll do this. A critical hit while they're down. Ooh. Really heavy damage when you manage to do that, so you always want to be looking for opportunities to get that kind of stuff in. Of course, you might not always be able to do it, because you have to watch the enemy's positioning as well. If you try to attack a target and there's another t and there's another enemy between you and them, they will sucker punch you while you're on your way to that target. <laughs> Yes, and, they will, cool. and they will cancel your attack. So you have to watch out for where everyone is. So you might not always be able to go after an enemy that you might want to prioritize. You can get past those attack cancellation blocks by using skills instead of the basic attack command, though. Because they will not be able to cancel your attack if you're, if you're going in for a skill. At least I think I think so. I might be misremembering. Mm -hmm. Another thing I liked when I was playing it was that they kind of have like a Paper Mario action defense system going on, where like if people swing at you and you push circle at just the right time, you can do a perfect guard, which will lower the amount of damage you take. Yes, you do have a basic guard command that you can use on your turn, which has a similar effect, but. If you want to play it skilled, perfect guard. Or you can fuck up like I just did. <laughs> you can pick up the stuff on the ground too? If there is a physics object near the enemy you're attacking with a, with a standard attack command, and you're using a bare-fisted fighting style, you will pick up that physics object and swing it around, just like you would be able to do in the action-based Yakuza games. In the action-based Yakuza games, it would be like, you push a button to pick up the thing, like it's a weapon in a Streets of Rage game, or something. Okay. But they implemented it here as a thing that you can do based on the situation. And if you see an opportunity to do it, by all means, because as you could, but it, because as you saw when it happened just there, it it turned your regular attack not just into a stronger attack, but an area of effect attack as well. Also, if you've ever been curious about the Virtua Fighter series, I have good news for you. In amongst the arcade games that Sega <laughs> uh, just pasted into the game in full for you to enjoy at the Club Sega arcades, there are two versions of Virtua Fighter to enjoy. <laughs> Two versions of Virtua Fighter. Like, just the whole game? <laughs> the the whole single-player arcade mode and its base difficulty, anyway. Um, not the not, Nothing that you would see in, in the console version, and obviously there's no way to play multiplayer here. But... Well, actually, actually, oh? uh, in the main menu, there is the two-player mode, and you can actually do Virtua Fighter or... At least in the other games, you could do, like, pool and darts with a friend. Hmm. But, uh, I, yeah, I believe... This is still true with Like a Dragon. If you check the main menu, there should be like a two-player versus menu, and one of the options should be Virtua Fighter. Oh, okay. I'll have to check that out. I didn't see that. But then I don't have anyone to play with, so I never check the two-player menu. <laughs> I, I assume mean, that's I assume that's pure local multiplayer, though. Yeah. I, yeah, I doubt it would be online. I mean, a free version of Virtua Fighter 5 to play with friends, I'm sure, is nice. <laughs> It, yeah, and it is the it is the like actual game, the full the full roster from the final showdown arcade release is here and you can you can just play through the game or hopefully play play with each other and you know, 
get a feel for whether or not you want to actually invest any time or money into the Virtua Fighter series for real. Um, I, I checked out the two Club Segas in Kamurocho, and it felt like there was Virtua Fighter 2 and 5, there was like uh, Space Harrier, Fantasy Super Zone, Hang on. Super Hang On, Outrun. Um, yeah. That's all that comes to mind for me. I'm surprised they've never put in the Super Monkey Ball arcade game into any of these, because the director of Yakuza is actually the creator of Super Monkey Ball as well. <laughs> um, which is yeah. a strange um, like uh, work shift to go from Super Monkey Ball to Yakuza. Well, um, you know, <laughs> the director of Resident Evil, <laughs> he got to start on stuff like Goof Troop, so... <laughs> <laughs> yes, that is also true. The only thing I can think of is that in some games, when you go to the claw machine, there are I.I. Mimi, like Super Monkey Ball figurines you can get from the claw oh, machine. Oh yeah, th those are definitely in there, I remember. Uh, I want I want a new monkey ball, like a real one, not a port of the bad one on the Wii. But that's a different. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, you know that's something to keep in mind. Someone from Sega, if someone from Sega is watching this, Super Monkey Ball Arcade in the next Yakuza game, maybe. I don't think they've ever ported the arcade version of the of the first game, so that would be neat. I guess. And then you wouldn't have to play it with a banana-shaped joystick, which would also be cool. Yeah, you could even have a sub-story with some, with some salty arcade player who's just, like, really piss at, at Super Monkey Ball. Oh. Oh, so me. You want me to have a side story in Yakuza and be angry that I can't beat the game. <laughs> okay. Expert segue, though. There's the public urinator. Or at least one of those guys is. Can you guess which one? Oh god. One of these guys is a public public urinator. Three of these guys are not. I'm not sure what happens if you pick the wrong one though, because I got it right on the first try. Can you tell which one it is? Uh the one on the, the middle, the second from the right. Clement. Mm. I'm gonna say the one on the far right. Far right? Yeah. Ted, congratulations! You recognize the public urinator from the back. Yes, it was the Damn. little. It was the little bounces, you know, because he needed to get that little <laughs> extra bit out. <laughs> what I'm wondering is why the other three guys were just standing there and not saying anything about it. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I'll have to come back here and do this again and just intentionally pick all the wrong ones. Oh, um, that, this might actually be a Dragon Quest reference in itself. In Dragon Quest 2, there's uh, one of the early towns. There's a guy standing in the corner of one of the the of one of the town, like near the wall. And you know, it's a it's an RPG that's 2D, so you're just talking to everybody. And he gets mad at you if you talk to him because he was pissing in the corner and he got some on him. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I didn't know that. It might, because he just said he splattered himself, which made me think it might be. I don't know. It could also just be, you know, a story about a guy pissing in the river, which also is, is, wait, yeah. it made a rainbow? What? <laughs> he okay, just... you know what? You, you should send this guy to a, to a, to a science lab, because that's some, that's some stuff that we should try to take advantage of for science. <laughs> okay. So, this guy is, like, really passionate about his public urination, but, you know, that's no good. So, let's teach him a lesson. Three on one. Threatening man. <laughs> Three on Level one. Because, public <laughs> because, we're, because we're truly manly, and we need our backup crew to beat up a public urinator. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm just imagining without the RPG set up and it's just three guys ganging up, beating on one guy. <laughs> what do you think that um, RPG fights look like, though, when you're a high enough level over the monsters? It's like <laughs> you're going back to the early first town to clear up some side quests you missed, and then a squirrel appears out of nowhere, and you've got a barbarian uh, stomping the squirrel in the face while a wizard shoots a giant fireball from the sky. It's overkill. <laughs> Oh, you gotta love the dropkick. Oh, man. That's what you get for peeing. The guy pulled a knife. He pulled a knife on me. He, don't you see that knife? You idiot, he's, we all have knives. <laughs> I could be seriously hurt. No, none of us have knives. One of us has a, a, a little stick. The other has, admittedly, a very vicious-looking bat covered in barbed wire. And, and Namba has an umbrella. 
That's gotta be one sturdy ass umbrella though. <laughs> Have you ever knocked an umbrella into anything? You so much as tap that against the ground, it'll break and never open correctly ever again. Yeah, he basically uses it like a, like a staff. <laughs> so I don't think he, he uses it you said he as was a. Your, you, you said he was a nurse in um, one of the cutscenes. Is he your healer? Uh, yeah, he does actually learn the healing powder skill at some point in this video, <laughs> although I never got around to using it. <laughs> That's great. Ah, uh, I can't wait to see what other kind of crazy I'm, personalities I'm just like, join this team. Hmm? Yeah, because I'm just thinking, of like, it's a turn-based RPG. They're going to incorporate a lot of turn-based gimmicks, like poison and burning and and group healing and stuff. And all of that I find fascinating in the frame of a Yakuza setting, you know? Oh, no. Uh, speaking of turn-based gimmicks, you're, um... Your Discord seemed to decide it wasn't your turn to talk, so it took you, like, way too long to get that sentence out. Uh. Oh, God. Oh, well, now you're fine, now that you don't have anything to say. Of course it's fine. <laughs> like, no, the complete sentence made it out. I just, it just took a while to, to reach my side of the Discord for some reason. Wait, As so you did this guy's <laughs> job for him and he gives you a bandage? The police in this universe suck. Don't worry, we're we're in our own little RPG universe right now. So that bandage is a vital piece of extra equipment for one of our party members, and is worth literal thousands of yen. <laughs> oh no! Don't do it. <laughs> no, Ichi, don't, don't do it. No, Ichiban. The bathroom is over there. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even record what happens right next to this quest endpoint, where there's this kid who talks to you about photographing these these, these collectible kappa statues, and he talks about how he likes this statue in particular because it has a cute butt. I I don't understand why why would you do that? Uh, I'm happy that in the bottom right corner I can see the skip prompt, because I get the feeling this would get old really fast if we couldn't skip yeah, it. Yeah, I thankfully we're past, like, 1997, and we can skip overly long uh, cutscenes <laughs> in RPGs now. Uh, yeah, maybe. On the other hand, if you've been playing Yakuza for a while, you've been pretty well conditioned to watching heat moves play out uh, a fair lot of the time, so... This is true. Your so mileage may vary. How, lo how long does it take to level up? Because I know that this is just probably your editing. You've been leveling up almost after every fight. I'm guessing that's mostly just a due to the matter of you um, cutting some stuff. In the beginning of the game, the opening hours, it seems to take quite a while to level Kasuga and his party members up. But once you get into Yokohama, it seems like the enemies there come in larger groups and give you larger experience and money payouts. So grinding becomes a bit less arduous after that point. So basically, don't grind until you get to Yokohama and can start doing sub-stories. It's, it's not worth the time it'll take to actually do. Um, in any case, that was Yakuza Like a Dragon. I am really, really getting into this game. I think you, too, you will too, Clement. And Ted, I think you'll enjoy it whenever you get yeah. around to the series. No, I, I, uh, just looking at this, I'm much more interested in it now after having seen it than I was before. Because before, like, I knew about it and I knew that it was an RPG and whatnot, but it still, like, wasn't really on my radar. But now that I've actually seen it, it does look really, really cool. <laughs> so, um, if I get the chance, I'm going to give it a shot. All right, then. Uh, I look forward to hearing what you have to say. If, uh, as for uh, the rest of you out there, I hope this video has done something for all of you to give you an idea of whether or not you like this game, whether you weren't a Yakuza fan and were just curious, whether you were a Yakuza fan and were skeptical like me of the shift over to turn-based combat, uh, maybe this did something to give you an idea of where your headspace is at in regards to this game. Um, what are your thoughts, Clement, since, this, since you've actually started the game and this has been a, a chunk of the game that's significantly farther in from where you're at? Uh, so far, it looks really great. I haven't gotten into any of the nitty-gritty. Uh, I'm interested to see how the story plays out, and 
I know it's got like karaoke and stuff <laughs> and all the same mini games that all these games do. So I'm very curious uh, about all that. It, I, I like Yakuza. I've definitely played through the whole series this year and I'm a fan. So and I'm also a fan of turn based RPGs. So you combine those two things. I get the feeling I'm gonna like this a lot. <laughs> well, I certainly do. I don't think I don't think you're gonna be uh, convinced away from that by playing further into the game. In any case, we've been staring at something. Maybe it's the end card. Maybe I got clever and edited something in uh, for this segment. In fact, now that I've said that, I'm gonna have to think of something clever to edit in. Fuck. Um. Karaoke something, future me. Do that. Later, everyone. <laughs> See you tomorrow for whatever commentary part goes up tomorrow.